Thanks, Bill, for that introduction. Um, as Bill was mentioning, there's over 700 cases. So you get multiple different pathologies, um, and each case has drawers um, that have certain specific patient information in it with age, um, what's going on with the patient, what happened, what was the differential diagnosis, and what was the final outcome of the patient. That's incredibly valuable for you as the instructor to prep your cases um, ahead of time. And then it's also really valuable if you, there's a multitude of ways you can actually use that tool in the classroom. You can either use it in the virtual clinical classroom, um, the virtual th uh, theory, or actual face-to-face -face theory classroom. Um, and also in lab. Um, today, um, you know, we're gonna demonstrate how to be a lead paramedic on a scene, but there's a multitude of ways you can integrate Real DX as far as the things you want to use at all levels, EMT basic all the way up through paramedic. Um, you can do team lead, you can do pathologies, um, which we'll focus on primarily today. You can do scene safety. Um, what I love is the case that Bill just showed you is a great case um, to talk about therapeutic communication and the integration with um, coworkers. Um, so we're gonna share, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna start going on this. All right. Um, Ian and Nora, you guys are dispatched to a 30-year-old male who is unconscious and unresponsive um, at a nearby park, um, and PD is on your scene. So we're going to take a pick quick, quick look to see um, how this looks. So that's your scene. Um, just looking at your scene, you know, you're more than your windshield view because you're out of your vehicles at this point. What scene service, what scene concerns do you have and what do you want to address? All right, so, um, you know, scene safety. Uh, we see that there's PD there, so we can assume the scene is safe currently. Uh, we'll reassess this throughout uh, the scenario or the case. Um, also, it looks like we are in an industrial part of town, possibly a park next to that. So that's something that we can look at as well. There's no crowds currently, but we do have PD there. If we need to control the crowds, uh, we can send them over. So. Okay. Uh, Nora, with just the dispatch information, um, what do you want to bring in on the scene equipment wise? Um, equipment wise, I would grab my gurney just in case we need to transport this patient. Um, my cardiac monitor would be very helpful as well as um, any medications or airway equipment. He is unresponsive, so I don't know if he can ma maintain his own airway, so that would be helpful. Okay, well, let's uh, hop on the scene and see what more information we can gather. Okay, we've got just pretty much about a 25 second view, which should be able to give us a couple of things really quickly. Um, Ian, what information could you gather? What do you see? What do you want to, what have you got in that, that are, that's gonna make you start thinking about rule in and rule out things? Yep, unmute yourself, Ian. <laughs> There, you there we go. Uh, so right off the bat, we already started getting some ABC information. Um, we do see that he has uh, been bagged by one of the uh, providers, so his airway is being controlled. Uh, they did say he has a pulse. Um, so walking up onto the scene, it's good to just assess that because just because they checked it, we don't know when they last checked. So I think that's a great idea to recheck. Um, also, uh, they said there's pinpoint pupils, which uh, right off the bat, he's unconscious and he's in respiratory distress because he's being bagged. Um, you know, that's leading me towards a narcotic overdose. Okay. Um, I think those are really good observations as well. Um, with that information, Nora, what are the very first things you want to do for this patient on your scene? Yeah, of course. So I'd want to hook him onto a cardiac monitor um, just to rule out any of my AEIOU tips. Um, I see that he is bagging him a simple airway adjunct, maybe um, an NPA, maybe not an OPA, just in case they want to give Narcan to reverse a possible narcotic overdose. We don't want anything in his mouth so that he can aspirate in any way. So an NPA, an end title will be good. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there any medications you want to start giving? Is there, do you want IV access? 
think IV access would be great and Narcan. Okay. Those are All right. Check his pupils. All right, so um, it looks like so far they've, they've done a couple of the things that you guys were also thinking of. Um, I see high flow oxygen being administered. It looks like they're starting to get an IV. I believe this provider is measuring an MPA. I'm not quite sure. I think we're gonna have to watch for that. Um, there was a bit more information that they gave you. Um, so at this point, what, what additional information is starting to get you to focus on one pathology versus another? Uh, I think, you know, the environmental clues, they said that he was in the bathroom for quite a while. Um, so I think it would be great to possibly send a provider with a police officer just to go to the bathroom, see if there's any sort of paraphernalia there, um, which could also lead us even further down the road of an opiate overdose and, you know, ruling out other AEIOE tips. Okay. Nora, um, I know you had suggested an MPA, and I think, like I said, I think they're doing that. Is there anything else you want to use to address that airway or any concerns you're going to have with that airway? Um, we should always have the concern of like aspiration, but they seem to be handling this airway properly. Hopefully he is measuring an NPA and getting that in. Um, again, I'd look for any acidosis because they're breathing for him. Okay, so how would you look for that? Um, your ETCO2, so your capnography. Yeah, so getting him on end title sounds like a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like it's taking him some time to to get an IV, how would you guys, how do you want that Narcan? Are, are you guys ready to give Narcan? And if so, um, how are you gonna give it and how much are you gonna give? I think ideally it's gonna be uh, intranasally initially because it seems like they're having a difficult time and you don't wanna delay giving that Narcan because that could reverse uh, the narcotics. Um, also, we're gonna give two milligrams. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Capnography. So, Nora, look there. There they go for that capnography. We're going to get on with that. And there is an NPA currently being placed as well. So, good call there. like there's that right, one on. milligram of Narcan. Get that line. Intermasally. Uh, Narcan. So what happened? Basically. Mm. 176 on blood sugar. Got waveform on that counter. So it looks like the blood sugar was 176. You want it? No, it's on. It's on. It's on. There's the waveform. Got it. Yeah, put on his so we've, we're about a minute in to them giving that internasal Narcan, and we've got no changes in um, increase of respiratory um, drive. Um, it looks like also that they've checked a sugar. Um, what do you think's going on? Do you still think that, that you're on the right track? Do you, are there other things you want to rule in, rule out? What, what's happening? So they already ruled out um, hypoglycemia. 176 is within a good range of um, blood sugar. Um, I don't think they got an end title yet. I would still continue checking for that and any other um, AEIOU tips. 
Okay. Yeah, right. Right. And to add to that, um, this could be a synthetic uh, opioid, which is going to require more Narcan uh, to knock it off the receptor sites, as well as um, he could have excess mucus in his uh, nares, which is also going to prevent the Narcan from getting absorbed. All right. Let's see where they go from here. So we're going to give that a second dose of Narcan. The belly's moving. Yeah. All right. Sorry. It looks like they're. Um, we're going to speed up just a little bit for time's sake, and our, our so we can finish off our whole webinar. But. So they've given a second Narcan um, and there's still no intervention. They're having a really hard time getting an IV. Why do you think that is? I think the patient uh, could be dehydrated, which is also is gonna cause a difficult time getting an IV. Also, if he is a known IV drug user, um, you're gonna have scar tissue built up on those veins, which is also gonna make it very difficult and they can roll. Okay. Um, do you agree with that second intranasal Narcan? And do you guys think that they should have had an effect with that? Do you think that we're on the right path? What would you continue and what treatment would you want to continue rendering? Um, his respiratory rate is super low, like they're still bagging him. And his end title is actually really high, which is concerning. Um, they also said something about um, his belly moving. So I'm thinking the air isn't going down his trachea like it's supposed to, and it's going down his esophagus, which is also <laughs> really bad. Um, I think they need to readjust this airway, or there's a lot of providers, so I would even have two people on that airway. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, so I'm going to tell you, just like I said, for time's sake, we're going we're gonna to advance this a little bit, but they finally get IV access at around seven minutes in. Um, with that IV access, is what do you guys want to do? Do you want to stay on the route of um, administering Narcan, or is there something you want to change? Is there anything you haven't ruled in or ruled out yet? I would like to continue on the route of opioid overdose and give Narcan IN, or IV. Okay. Nora, do you agree with that, or is there something else you want to look at? Um, yeah, I, I completely think this is a narcotic overdose. Um, I think IV would be sufficient um, for that Narcan, just because also I don't think it's getting to the receptor sites. So. Okay. So we're going to jump up to, to seven minutes and uh, after they get an IV, and let's see if they address any of those airway issues that you were talking about, Nora, um, with uh, working on the ventilation and, and readjusting that airway. Um, quick question, though, is there anything you can do to also reduce that end tidal? Aside from having two people on the airway, you've got your simple airway adjunct in, um, repositioning the head, what else can you do? How do you want to ventilate them? You can also increase the ventilations. All right, okay, let's see where they go. So, like I said, they got IV access. The blood sugar was normal. And it looks like they're doing some things going down and making sure, let's roll things in and roll things out again. Okay, two more on. So he's now will have had four milligrams of Narcan, two internasally and two IV. Yeah, no other. They're looking at that end pedal as well. Look at that. They're repositioning the airway. Uh, I think he's dying a little faster for him. Getting a 12 lead. Guy's getting that. If he doesn't recover from this, we'll just throw him on the. Uh, Easy, 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 easy,
Lay back. Lay back. Lay back. Yeah, I'm good. Lay, Lay back. back. Lay back. Okay. So it looks like what what do you think happened? Why is he all of a sudden awake talking to you? Tell me your your uh, is your are your interventions working? Um, what are your concerns at this time, Ian? Uh, I think the interventions are working, uh, especially going IV. It's going to be it's a surefire way to get to the receptor sites, especially because the patient does have a pulse. Um, I would be concerned uh, with seeing safety now. You know, I said in the beginning we're going to reassess, and now that we have a new patient. Uh, we didn't get a number for what his entitle was, but they said it was bringing it down, but he could still be hypoxic. So he seems very confused. Uh, he could also become combative. Uh, so I think it's great that there's, you know, providers there maintaining control of the situation and, you know, telling him exactly what's happening, informing him, and, you know, just maintaining control. I think that's the best thing for this patient at this moment. Fantastic. Uh, Nora, what do you want to do with the patient? What, uh, what other... Treatment do you want to render? What additional assessments do you want to do? Yeah, so I would like to reassess my primary. Um, look at his ABCs again. He is breathing on his own. I want to see if it's adequate. Um, his skin color. Uh, I would also do a whole secondary. Um, look at him head to toe and transport him, of course. Get a better history, see what he took, um, if any underlying diseases he has or and just monitor his vitals and route. Fantastic. Um, you guys did a great job. Um, you identified um, certain things that were concerning on your scene. I think you addressed the airway and continually reassessed it um, and made changes as the case continued, as well as thought of outside things that could be causing um, the unresponsiveness. Um, I think also, Ian, you, you hit on as he gets up, he is still very hypoxic. And at that point, he's confused and can be easily combative, um, which makes it a very unsafe scene and something you can continue to consider, right? Your sensitivity doesn't end when you enter the scene. Like you said at the very beginning, it continues throughout. And this is a, a prime example of that. Um, Nora, I think you hit on, you know, absolutely reassessing him from head to toe, finding out information, but understanding that that my information might not be real accurate until he is actually not hypoxic anymore, but not just get pigeonholing yourself into one pathology. Um, great job, guys. Um, thank you um, so much. Um